On the 5th of December, the crew of the Dea Grazia observed a strange vessel. It was sailing erratically and seemed to be in distress. Captain David Morehouse changed course to offer assistance and was surprised to discover it was the Mary Celeste. It had left New York eight days before his own ship and by now should be unloading in Genoa, where it was bound. Not here, 400 miles east of the Azores. He hailed the ship and when no reply came, he sent a boarding party to investigate. Oliver DeVoe led the men. First off, DeVoe checked the ship's pumps. There were two, and unusually, he found one of them taken apart. Looking at it from a sailor's point of view, a historian's point of view, is that the sounding rod was out on deck. It was either for maintenance or something had gone wrong. The pumps extend from the deck down to the bilges, the deepest part of the hull. They remove seawater from leaks and seepage from cargo. You dropped a metal rod that you put, you put ash on, and you dropped a metal rod on a lanyard, and then withdrew it, and you could see how far up the rod the ash was wet to your depth. Crews usually stored the sounding rod in the pumps, or on the deck nearby. The reason it was on deck is so you could sound frequently. Wooden boats leaked, and sometimes they would develop rather large leaks very quickly. Sounding the pumps, DeVoe found that the Mary Celeste had taken on less than four feet of water. Though I would have said that on a vessel of that type, knowing how her design was at the stern, that three and a half feet of water would not be a, um, a worrying factor. Reasonably sure the Mary Celeste was not about to sink, DeVoe went below. He found some cabins flooded. In the skylight, a pane of glass was broken. But beneath it was this rosewood harmonium. It belonged to the captain's wife, Sarah Briggs, and it was completely dry. The men found working charts, but not the ship's papers, nor her navigational instruments or maps. Otherwise, personal effects did not seem to be disturbed. 